Hey, good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be able to have an opportunity to talk to you again and um, just think a little bit about where we're at as a church. I'm sure you've been encouraged and probably excited, too, to read the news yesterday that a lot of the restrictions and guidelines for COVID have been lifted and are easing up. It even included churches. You probably picked that up. I know a lot of people did. Um, so I want to talk to you about two questions that you're sending us fairly regularly, probably by the hour right now. Number one question is, have you seen the news? Have you seen that churches can open up and that there's no limits on regathering? And the answer to that is yes, we've seen that. So the second question that you're asking us is, when exactly will Crossroads reopen? And that is the $10,000 question that I want to talk to you about for a few minutes this afternoon. What you need to know is behind that one line in the news that says churches can reopen is actually an eight page document that is full of protocols, that's full of things that we have to have in place in order to allow people to come back here to the church building. So what we're doing right now is we're studying that document. Even as I speak, they're studying that document to figure out what has to be in place so that we can meet. And it's not easy. There's just a lot of things that have to be in place that we have to be careful to not overlook before we allow people to come back in. Uh, the second thing that we're doing, which you should be aware of, is the church board is meeting next Tuesday night. And I would ask you to keep that in mind because we're going to be next Tuesday night looking at this item on the agenda of when we reopen. Um, but I thought it might be useful for you for a few minutes just to um, give you some insight into our thinking and just invite you into this process so that you know what we wrestle with in terms of reopening the building. Here's four things that go into our thinking. Number one would be this. We're trying to get a very clear sense from the Holy Spirit as to when and how to reopen. We don't want to be driven by a sense of urgency. We don't want to be driven by what other churches are doing. Some of them will probably reopen this weekend. We want to be careful that we keep in step with the Holy Spirit. And so as a leadership, we've been praying about that. I've asked you to pray with us. Um, we're trying to keep our ear to the ground, to the Holy Spirit, as it were, to get a real clear sense of direction from him so that we could all say it seems good to, it seems good to us and it seems good to the Holy Spirit. Second thing that goes into our thinking is, of course, that eight-page document and trying to figure out um, how to put all of that in place. So what can we actually do and how many people can we actually have at a time and what's required um, to be able to pull off services uh, like we'd like to do it. So that goes into it for sure. Third thing that goes into our thinking is what would be good and right and proper for our own people? I mean, at Crossroads, we're a large church, and we have a demographic that goes from very young to actually very old. And we have to keep in mind everybody and what would be the best in terms of their health, what would be the best in terms of helping them to be able to access the building and exit the building. Um, we're working through that too. I guess the fourth thing that goes into our thinking is what is God actually doing right now in our present situation? We don't want to be so quick to rush back into a building that we actually miss what God is up to right now and kind of discount it. I thought about that and I wanted to share with you some of the things that God is doing right now. So, because I think that's kind of the flip side of coming back into the building. It's actually looking at what God is doing now and without losing that. Do you know right now our viewership, our attendance online is way up from what it used to be. Right here in central Alberta, maybe it's your friends and neighbors, but people are watching in central Alberta that have never watched before. And even globally, people are watching from around the globe. I get emails every week from different parts of the world where people are watching. Just this last week, yesterday, I got one from Romania. I got one from Greece. Um, I know that they're watching in um, Australia, South Africa, Seychelles Island, England, Northern Ireland. I mean, the reach that God has allowed us to have is very different from what it used to be. There's even other churches that have joined with us for a while while they can't open. And some of those churches have been um, greatly strengthened and helped, not only by what we do on Sundays, but, but by what we offer on our website. One church looked on our website and found the Alpha Course and actually started an Alpha Course as a result of seeing it on our website. Um, the other thing I really think is cool what God is doing is he's actually changing our thinking. You know, a lot of us thought as, of church as the building, 
It's the place we go. It's what we do on Sundays. But through this time, I think God has been changing our thinking to help us understand the church is not the building, it's us. And in the community, we are the church doing the work of Jesus Christ. And I hope that we never lose that perspective and that change of thinking. I mean, there's so much good that's happening right now. Um, so we're not driven by any sense of urgency. We want to keep those four things in mind when we think about reopening the building. I hope that next week in our video update, I can give you a bit more information. Um, we all want to be back, including myself and the leadership, but we want to do it well. We want to do it right, and we want to do it in step with the Holy Spirit. So I have a couple of asks for you. If you would remember to please pray next Tuesday night for the board as we meet, because we're going to be wrestling with this. We need wisdom, understanding, discernment from the Holy Spirit. And then secondly, don't miss the opportunity right at your feet, right at my feet, to gather together in smaller groups right now. You know, the, um, the restrictions have been lifted uh, significantly in terms of how many people we can actually have in our homes. We talked last fall about the um, hospitality and the importance of practicing that. Right now is a tremendous opportunity to do that. You can actually invite some people into your homes. You could watch the service together. You could have a barbecue after. It could be a great time to connect. I mean, you'll have to check out the guidelines. I'm not going to do all that for you, but there's a, the restrictions in terms of how many we can have in our homes um, are, are, have been lifted and eased off in such a way. This could be a huge opportunity for us to be the church in our neighborhood, to invite your friends to come over and watch together. Let's try that. Let's take a step of faith and invite some people to watch on Sunday and see what God might do. Hey, I'm, I'm excited about where we're at. I'm not panicked. Um, I know that God is in complete control. He's building his church. He hasn't stopped working. And we're going to see more than we could ever ask or imagine if we simply keep in step with the Holy Spirit. So I hope you have a great weekend, a great rest of the week. God bless, and I'll look forward to talking to you more about this next Wednesday.